This DIY activated carbon air purifier reduces odors, aka VOCs, and takes just a few minutes to assemble. It's so easy, it can barely be called DIY because you don't really have to do much of anything. It's an especially good option if your home is a new build that's still off-gassing, or if you live somewhere with hazardous wildfire smoke, pesticide drift, or factory emissions. Any situation where your air has an odor that's bothering you and you can't remove the source of the odor. So in this video, I'll show you how to put it together, and I'll also compare its performance to three of the most well-regarded consumer air purifiers with large amounts of carbon. Before we delve into that, I want to explain why I even bothered putting this thing together in the first place. Like, why didn't I just buy a consumer air purifier? To give some very necessary background, air purifiers can be designed to do two things. Capture particles or gases. In the context of air purification, gases are usually called odors or VOCs. So, okay, particles are larger and VOCs are smaller. You need one kind of filter to capture particles and another kind to capture VOCs. HEPA filters and MERV filters are designed to capture particles only. In general, air purifiers are best at this, particle capture. To capture VOCs, you need an activated carbon filter. To capture VOCs well, you need a thick bed of carbon, not just like a thin layer. A lot of air purifier brands tend to combine HEPA filtration and a thick carbon bed in the same machine. Here's the issue with that. When you design an air purifier so that its blower has to pull air through both a thick carbon filter and also a HEPA filter, which are both very restrictive, you majorly sacrifice airflow and in turn performance, otherwise known as clean air delivery rate, or CADR. CADR is basically a measure of how quickly an air purifier draws down the particle count in a space. Okay, so you sacrifice that, or you sacrifice cost, noise, and energy use because a very powerful blower is needed to pull through both of these filters. Take the HEPA brand Austin Air. For example, their HealthMate is expensive at 765 US dollars. It contains around 15 pounds of activated carbon, but its clean air delivery rate for particles is really not good. And how do I know that? Because like most HEPA air purifier companies, Austin Air does not share their CADR data. Hmm. Well, according to cleanairstars.com, a site that compiles independent testing data about air purifier performance, their health mate hits 154 CFM CADR on turbo speed, which is very loud at 62 decibels. So I used to own one of these and it's way too loud at high speed to have a, even have a conversation over it. 154 CFM is really not great. For comparison, a DIY Corsi Rosenthal box, which uses less restrictive MERV 13 filters instead of HEPA, has a CADR of at least 400 CFM and up to 800 CFM on its own highest speed. So over five times more effective. And yes, it even captures ultra fine particles, just like HEPA. So. If this type of result is surprising to you, like you're like, what? No, you need a three-stage HEPA filter in order to capture particles. Check out this video of mine. I will convince you otherwise. Back to the Austin Air HealthMate. At medium speed, which is what most health-conscious people probably run it at, it reaches a measly 77 CFM CADR. 77 is very, very weak. Anyway, there are other brands that include heavy blocks of carbon, some probably better than Austin Air, but they tend to suffer from the same issues, being quite expensive and needing to be turned up to very loud speeds to produce decent airflow. And or they use photocatalytic oxidation cleaners, which can emit unhealthy byproducts. So again, the ones that include enough carbon to capture VOCs well tend to be extremely expensive, and in order to achieve decent airflow, you have to put them on super loud speeds. They also are not transparent about their unit's ability to capture particulate, and independent testing tends to show poor CADRs for the money compared to DIY options. Keep watching because in a bit, I'll show you actual data comparing the DIY option to these consumer options. 
So I touched on this a little bit, but what about using a smaller amount of activated carbon? Well, the cheaper or mid-priced HEPA air purifier brands do use less carbon, which helps them achieve higher clean air delivery rates for particulate removal, but that sacrifices the efficacy and longevity of their VOC capture. That very thin layer of carbon means they aren't able to capture VOCs as comprehensively or efficiently, and they need to be replaced faster because they saturate faster. How do we solve these problems? How do we capture VOCs well and particles well? Well, I think the best way to capture particles well is to use a less restrictive filter, such as MERV-13, which balances airflow and efficiency better than HEPA. Again, the scientific research shows that a four-filter CR box type design is best for this. What about the VOCs? Well, I'm not sure exactly how to integrate 20 plus pounds of carbon into a CR box without negatively impacting its performance or running into engineering challenges that would turn this project into a messy, laborious, dusty undertaking instead of an easy DIY solution for most people. So the way I'm doing it is to have two separate units one that's a particle specialist, and another that's a VOC specialist. The drawback of this is, of course, that it takes up more space and isn't as aesthetically pleasing. But hey, I mean, it works well, and that's what I'm most concerned with on this channel. I've shown how to create a particle specialist in previous videos. Now, I'll show you how to build a VOC specialist. First, I needed to find the right carbon filter. After researching options for too long, honestly. Um, I settled on fat filters. I went with fat filters for my DIY carbon air purifier, mainly because they're more transparent about their carbon. They publish independent lab test results, including things like ball pan hardness, which shows the carbon strength and durability. Most brands don't share nearly as much data. Fat filters use more carbon per filter and a higher grade compared to a lot of cheaper brands, which probably means better filtration and a longer lifespan. They claim it can last up to two years. I do take their claims with a grain of salt, but overall the transparency and carbon specs gave me more confidence than other options out there. This video is not sponsored by them or anyone else. As far as the fan, I ended up going with AC Infinity six inch inline duct fans because I've been using them for years and they're quiet and durable. Now let's talk about the dreaded subject of carbon dust. So to prevent carbon dust from being blown into my air, I used AC Infinity's six inch filter box, which comes with a MERV 13 filter. I tested my DIY carbon air purifier with a particle counter and saw no increase in particle count and no carbon dust in my space on any of the surfaces, even after months suggesting that MERV-13 is sufficient to catch carbon dust. Here's a weird little tangent. Some people are sensitive to the smell of carbon itself. So the VOCs that carbon gives off, it's kind of ironic, huh? Even HEPA cannot block those. So if that's you, you're sensitive to that, use fresh air only, not carbon. And finally, to attach everything, I used AC Infinity's six inch duct coupler. And those are all the parts, that's it. So. I made two versions of this thing, a bigger, more expensive and powerful one for larger spaces, like, you know, roughly 400 square feet plus, and a smaller, cheaper one with a slightly less robust fan and a shorter filter. The smaller one only requires one duct clamp because the fan fits snugly into the filter box without one. Links to the parts for each are in the description. What makes this VOC specialist setup great is that it's so quick. You just wipe down the carbon canister to clean off any loose carbon, slide the included pre-filter sleeve over the canister, attach the filter box with the coupler, and then the duct fan blowing upward on top of that, and you're done. So the couplers can be screwed tight with a screwdriver, and so that's really the only tool you'll need. Oh, oh yeah, and by the way, make sure to take the filter box's filter out of the plastic. Um, anyway, yeah, this is very easy. So there's really nothing to like demonstrate. This should take you around five minutes to assemble. Uh, oh yeah, to blow away some of that loose carbon dust that got like shaken up during transport, I recommend running this outside on medium high speed without the filter box for like a few hours. 
So if you build this, you can use different brands of filter and fan. It doesn't have to be the ones I chose. That's one huge advantage of DIY units in general. They're not as proprietary. Most consumer air purifiers lock you into using only their specific filters, but with DIY, you have more flexibility and you take back some power, my fellow renegade. I also want to acknowledge that I'm not nearly the first person to put together a setup like this with like, you know, a filter, then a filter box, then a fan. I'm not sure who is. It's not exactly an original idea at this point. Um, but if you know the first person that made a setup like this, comment below, give them credit. Again, this is not a sponsored video. So consider supporting me on Patreon if you like my content. Okay, now. I want to add an extremely important caveat. If you want your home to be less stuffy, less odorous, etc., which I assume you do or else you wouldn't be watching this, fresh air is an even better option. If you want to learn about why that is, watch this video of mine. If you want to learn a DIY installation technique of the most effective way of getting fresh air into your home, no matter the time of year, no matter your climate, watch this video. And now, for the moment, a lot of you have probably been waiting for. Let's see how this DIY activated carbon design performs compared to some consumer units. Before I show you the results, I need to qualify everything by saying this. It's very challenging to measure VOCs directly in a home setting. And I explain exactly why at 207 in this video. The gist of it is that comprehensive VOC analysis typically requires extremely expensive lab-grade instruments like the mobile PTR-MS setup used by UT Austin Sniffer Lab. Most home VOC monitors only detect the most abundant VOCs, which are often like alcohols or terpenes, and those are not necessarily the most toxic ones. Be that as it may, there is plenty of research showing that activated carbon captures numerous VOCs, so we really already know that. For the purposes of this experiment, we're going to use airflow as a surrogate for VOC removal, just as CO2 concentration is used as a surrogate for ventilation. VOC removal does depend on the amount and type of carbon, but more airflow ensures more air contacts the carbon per minute. So I also tried standardizing the amount of carbon as best I could. In other words, I compared units that have a similar amount of carbon. So what brands did I choose? I compared the three arguably most well-known and well-regarded consumer carbon units, Austin Air, Aller Air, and Air Pura to the DIY units. Finally, to be perfectly clear, this is not a particle capture test. This is a VOC removal estimation test. Here are the results. Feel free to pause the video if you wanna dig into the data more, but I'll highlight some of the more important metrics. Let's focus on medium speed because that's what most people tend to run these at. And by the way, I don't recommend running these higher than six or seven out of 10. The smaller, cheaper DIY setup at speed four of 10 produced 135 CFM at a fairly quiet 48 decibels. It produced 2.8 CFM per decibel at a cost of $289 per CFM. The larger, more expensive DIY setup at speed four of 10 also produced 146 CFM at a fairly quiet 49 decibels. It produced 3.0 CFM per decibel at a cost of $3.1 per CFM. Let's compare to the Austin Air, which produced 125 CFM at 52 decibels. It produced 2.4 CFM per decibel at a cost of $6.1 per CFM. Okay, that was a lot of numbers and I would probably be lost if I were you, so let's talk about what they mean. The Austin Air produces less airflow at equivalent noise level, and it's more expensive at equivalent airflow compared to the DIY units. So the Austin Air is louder, less powerful, and more expensive. It also contains a bit less carbon. Now let's compare to some arguably more well-regarded brands, Air Pura and Aller Air. These units are far more expensive at 1300 and 1400 US dollars. I searched high and low for airflow and noise data for these at medium speed, and I couldn't find any. They only give us data at turbo speed, which is extremely loud. 
So just so this video isn't extremely long, let's just go over cost per CFM of Airflow. The Aller Air is 3.5, the Air Pura is 2.0, and the small and large DIY units are both 1.3. In other words, once again, the DIY units are less expensive at equivalent airflow. Do these tests definitively prove that the DIY units are better at capturing VOCs than the consumer units? Not quite. There are other variables that would need to be taken into account, but that's out of scope for this video. For example, some of the consumer units use gas sorbent media like zeolite in addition to their carbon. I mean, does that add major benefit? Also, Air Pura and Aller Air have three inch and three and a half thick carbon beds, respectively, while the DIY with fat filters bed is two inches thick. The data surrounding bed thickness versus carbon quality and purity versus airflow is not well understood. What we do know is that the bed should be probably at least one and a half inches thick, but it's unclear how much additional benefit is achieved beyond that. Fat Filters argues that their carbon is purer, of higher quality, and therefore has a higher adsorption efficiency and capacity. In order for me to sit here and agree with that, I'd need to run an extensive, expensive experiment in a lab setting with all variables controlled. Since I can't do that, I can't claim definitively that the DIY option is better. But at the very least, these results suggest that DIY units are a strong budget option. Most importantly, I just want to acknowledge that I could be missing something here. I want this video to like, you know, add to the conversation, not declare that I'm right. As always, I'd like your input so we can iterate together. To summarize this video as a whole, when you combine a restrictive HEPA filter with a restrictive carbon block, particulate capture and therefore CADR majorly suffers. VOC capture likely suffers too because airflow suffers. So I don't think having a HEPA in this context is an asset at all. In fact, I don't even think HEPA filters are necessary in air purifiers in general. Extensive research shows that MERV 13 CR box type air purifiers striking a better balance between airflow and filter efficiency tend to perform better than HEPA air purifiers. I'm not sure though how to effectively and easily combine a thick carbon filter with a CR box. So I use two separate units, one for particle capture and one for VOC capture. Anyway, I'm not arguing that my DIY carbon units are far superior to everything else on the market and in the world. You be the judge. But what I am asserting is that they likely balance cost, noise, and efficacy pretty well. If you need more help with your home's air quality beyond this solution, I do offer consultations. If you've been quoted tens of thousands of dollars for invasive home improvements or remediation you cannot or will not pay for, I can give you practical evidence-based DIY protocols to help you improve your home's air quality without major renovations. This is whether you rent or own your home and whether you're dealing with like allergies, other chronic symptoms or mold concerns that you suspect might be connected to your air quality. I just want to say I'm not a doctor. I'm not a doctor for people, but I'm kind of a doctor for homes. So anyway, the link to book a session is in the description. Thank you so much to my Patreon supporters for your generosity. What else? Uh, subscribe to my newsletter at the link in the description. And most importantly, I wish you health and comfort in your body. And my fellow renegades, I salute you.